Temple AME Church for Easter at the Temple 2024. Presented by Reed Temple's Music Arts Ministries. We must go to the tomb while we believe it's just one night. Wednesday, March 27th at 7 p.m. This year, we're bringing back the musical stage play, We Must Go to the Tomb, with new scenes and music illuminating the story of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ through drama, dance, and music. This play is written and directed by Reed's very own dance ministry leader, Reverend Dr. Faye Chandler. Join us for this special evening featuring our Reed Temple Music Arts Ministries. We look forward to worshiping with you at Easter at the Temple. So bring your family, neighbors, and friends and join us at Reed Temple AME Church, Wednesday, March 27th at 7 p.m. This is a free concert and doors open at 6 p.m. Reed Temple is located at 11400 Glendale Boulevard, Glendale, Maryland. You don't want to miss this event. Reed Temple, where Reverend Dr. Mark E. Whitlock Jr. is senior pastor. For more information, visit reedtemple.org forward slash events. What's up, Reed Temple fam? Welcome back to Temple News Live. Here are this week's announcements. Get ready for Boot Camp 2024. This will be held every other Saturday from March 16th to December 14th from 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. You can participate either with hybrid classes or online. For more information, visit reedtemple.org forward slash events. Mark your calendars for Reed Temple's seven last words of Christ's service with several incredible speakers on Friday, March 29th at 12 p.m. in person. For more information, visit reedtemple.org forward slash events. Our annual King David Chess Tournament is back on Saturday, April 27th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. in person. To register, visit readtemple.org forward slash events. Are you a teen and looking for something fun to do this summer? Join the R3 Youth Ministry for their Teen Retreat 2024 from Thursday, June 20th to Sunday, June 23rd in Williamsburg, Virginia. The cost is $350. And for more information, email youth at readtemple.org. That's a wrap for this week's Temple News Live. Make sure you follow us on all of our social media platforms platforms. Happy Palm Sunday, and we'll see you next week. This, the palm is a reflection of victory and triumph. It is when Jesus rides a, a coat into Jerusalem saying, ah, hallelujah, I come to kill death. I come to remove its sting. I come to eliminate sin. I come to give us a bread of day. Is there somebody in the house that can declare on your feet and wave your palm? Because he God, God delivered us a mighty long way. God delivered us from slavery. God delivered us, hallelujah, from Jim Crow. It, God delivered us come on wave your hand and I want you to make sure you do it hallelujah at the end of the sermon amen keep waving your hand keep waving your palm amen God now bless this palm may it reflect the victory in life wave this palm may it reflect the triumph of life God this is the day that the Lord has made and we come to be glad rejoice and be glad in it because Jesus died so that we may give a wave offering Jesus lives so that we may give a wave offering offering Jesus is coming back again so that we may give our wave of it now give God a glory give God a glory wave amen and amen amen and amen come on hallelujah in Jesus name it's built on nothing less than Jesus blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest strength but holy lean on Jesus
Well, good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to another opportunity for us to gather together for Rise Up, Wake Up, and Pray Up, where we are expecting God to do nothing less than to show up. We want God to show up in our lives and make a difference in our lives. And I am so excited during this Holy Week to have each and every one of you here with us today. I'm looking for God to show up in a miraculous way today because we understand that this is a time and a period in which he sacrificed his life life for us, sacrificed his life so that we could be free and so that we could have everything that we need from him. I don't know where I would be if God would not have sacrificed his life. I'm so excited today because I understand that in just a few days, we're going to experience something called the crucifixion and go go down that journey. And we're here today to prepare for that, prepare for that experience, prepare for what God has for us. And I'm just so excited today because they did not keep my savior in the grave. Uh, we understand and reading our word that in a, just a few days, he was able to rise just like he said he would, just like he did. And I'm just so excited that you are here today to experience rise up, wake up, pray up with us on this day the day that we talk about what God did and what he did, how he sacrificed his life for. The Bible tells us out there in John that he said, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So I'm so glad that in the midst of everything I do wrong, in the midst of everything I experience, that I have a savior that promised me that I will be with you always. And I'm excited to know today that I can go down so many wrong paths and that he would forgive me. I can make mistakes and he can forgive me. You can go down wrong paths and he will still forgive you. You can make mistakes and he will still forgive you because we serve an awesome savior. And I don't know where I would be without him. I'm excited to know today that if it had not been for his love, had not been for his um, faithfulness, uh, had not been for his grace, his grace and mercy that cares for me in spite of whatever we might face. Um, good morning again. Welcome to see you. Good to see you here. Why don't we take some time now and let others know that rise up, wake up, pray up is live. This opportunity for you to wake up with the word and have a wonderful experience for what God has for you. I'm just excited to know that on this day, God has a word for us today. So much that we could be talking about this week, but this week we're talking about the ultimate sacrifice that he made. He made an ultimate sacrifice for each and every one of us to the point I don't know where I would be if he had not made that sacrifice. He made the ultimate sacrifice for us. So on this day, I give him my all. On this day, um, I celebrate him. I celebrate him because he's worthy to be celebrated. Amen. Um, I don't know um, about you out there, but um, I really thank God today because so many people go through things, but in spite, we have a savior that promised us when we go through something, when we experience something, when we face challenges, that we don't have to be alone. And he reminded us this in his word when he told us that he was going to be here always. He was not going to leave us. Um, you know, he was going to stay with us, hold us, gird us. And I just thank God for that because I don't know where I would be without him. Without God, I will indeed be nothing. Without him, I sure would fail. Without him, I will be lost just like a ship without a sail. Let someone else know about broadcast and let them know that we're live this morning here at Reed Temple for Rise Up, Wake Up and Pray Up. And they have an opportunity to join us now as we enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. And we're thankful because this is yet a day that we celebrate our savior. He's been so good to me. I just can't tell it all. So good to me. And I thank him for this word that we're going to have this morning. We have some great things happening at Reed Temple. 
And I want to make sure each and every one of you know about it. So many great things happening. And, you know, Reed Temple is a church that we celebrate our Savior. We celebrate him. We're celebrating him all week. We have some great announcements we'll get to later. But one I do want to pay close attention on, and that is this Saturday, the youth of Reed Temple are all gathering at Reed Temple for the Easter extravaganza. And I want to see you there and your families there. Feel free to bring your families. An opportunity for you to join in fellowship um, with the community and with our church family here at Reed Temple. That's such a blessing because God has, um, you know, now made it so readily available that we can bless the communities. And we want to do that. Um, and I want to see each and every one of you there as we do that on Saturday, starting at 2 p.m. want to see you bring out your families, bring out your loved ones and come and be with your Reed Temple family. God has something in store for you. Um, that's not all. We have a word from the Lord on this morning. I was meditating this morning on what to talk about this morning. And it, the, the, the what came to mind was a song that I'm sure you are all familiar um, with. Um, it's a song. It's called The Greatest Love of All. Right. Um, so many of us. Um, are familiar with that song um, by um, Whitney Houston, The Greatest Love of All. And I was thinking about it and I said, well, you know what? Definitely I can compare that to my Savior because my Savior indeed showed me that he was the greatest love of all. Amen. The greatest love of all. in spite of what might happen. Amen. In spite of what we go through, he told us and showed us that he was the greatest love of all. Uh, we're going to look at a few um, things this morning, but one thing I want us to pay close attention to is the text this morning, because the text shows us that in spite of what we face, in spite of mistakes we make, in spite of life, life ain't that we have a savior that promised us that he was the greatest love of all. And if we pay close attention to that, we'll understand that this morning. But let's look at Matthew chapter 27. Um, we're going to start at verse um, 32 um, there in Matthew, Matthew 27, 32. And the Bible reads closely, as they were going out, they met a man from Syria named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha. They offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots. Um, I guess we'll stop there at 35, but the text goes on to speak on the crucifixion of Jesus and the greatest love of all. When I think of that text this morning, I simply cannot reflect without getting sad, you know, even, you know, because definitely this is speaking on the crucifixion of my savior, the crucifixion of him and the fact that he died for me. Um, you know, we're all familiar with the, even the song, I believe it was Kurt Franklin that said he, they hung him high, right? They stretched him wide. Um, they did that to our savior. Um, they did that to him to the point of we, may not even understand the pain that our savior went through. And I really mean this because at times people of God, we should have been the individuals on that cross. But we disobey. We don't do what we are supposed to do. We don't listen. I mean, God's been telling us so much, so much, so much. And we don't do it. Right. Um, but in spite, he took our place on that cross. And Good Friday marks a moment in time when Jesus Christ endured the agony for our sins. And I thank him because in spite of what I do, in spite of what you do, in spite of the mistakes we make, the day that he took that play, our place on that cross, it was a divine purpose purpose in our life. Amen. And in spite of him being betrayed and enduring suffering, we gained so much. And that was forgiveness. I was just speaking with our young people on Sunday. Uh, we were focusing on the fact that um, Jesus entered into the town and they were loving all on Jesus as we celebrate Palm Sunday. And they were loving on him and celebrating him, just like we often celebrate each other, you know, and they were celebrating him. But as you, if you've been reading and following the week, this week, you've been noticing that day by day, 
they're turning on our savior. And sometimes people will do that to you. Um, you'll have friends who love you. You'll have family. You'll have just situations love you. And day by day, you see things begin to change. We cannot get too um, comfortable, I'll say, that we think that we're more important than our Savior. He endured the same thing. They loved him. They worshiped him. They magnified him. Hosanna. And then just a few days later, we're here in court. We're here in court and we're even walked from court to court to face trial because indeed, I'm the son of God. I'm the son of God and I was sent here to save you. And it's so a time that we have to reflect and say, Lord, why did you endure all this? Because you were Lord. Saints of God, I don't know how you can experience this Holy Week and not reflect. Just picture the scene. You have to reflect because Jesus, he was battered. Um, he was bruised. We just read the text of him carrying his cross. Um, and along the way, at that point, he had to be tired, right? Jesus had experienced pain over that time period and court to court, as I mentioned, but also he was beat along the way. Beat, hurt, bleeding, cut. And along the way, he stumbled. And he was he he was tired. You know what I'm saying? Like we often get. And he had to carry his cross. And literally, that cross, I'm sure, was heavy. And they began to do these things that I'll speak of in shortly, but about um, beating him and nailing him to the cross and everything, but it's the fact that he did it for you. And he endured the hours of pain. Jesus endured the hours of dealing with this for you. And even when he got on that cross, he was thinking of us. Um, he was thinking of us. And that's why we get so tied up with the hustle and the bustle of life, you know, that we cannot forget the greatest love of all. It's easy to get caught up, right? Um, you know, it's easy to get caught up in our achievements, um, in our um, life, and um, amidst, all, you know, just things, because life can get busy, but we cannot forget or dive into the moment that Jesus' sacrifice was the greatest sacrifice of them all. Because he did this thinking of each and every one of us. I believe it's there in Romans when it said that he demonstrated his love for us in this. And they were that, that text is speaking of how he died for us, how Christ died for us. And in, in literally, he God demonstrated his love for us by dying on the cross. And I don't know about you this morning, but literally I'm excited and happy that he did not give up on me, right? He did not give up because he knew that I needed to experience his love. I needed to experience his grace. I needed to experience his uh, salvation. And, and that's simply meaning that no matter what we go through in this life, we're not too big to forget that Jesus died for you. Jesus died for us. Jesus was there for us. And I thank him on this day. And this is a sacrificial love that's there. And it's no greater love than this. Um, I was speaking a little bit about um, how he sacrificed his life for our li liberty. You know, Jesus, the son of God, he was sinless. Um, he was blameless. But yet he chose to bear the weight of our sins upon himself, right? He chose to endure the pain and the suffering. He, you know, he chose to do this for us. And that was a selfless act. Amen. It and it revealed a deep character in him that he loved us. 
in spite of what we do, in spite of what we say, the cross was not just some random event, right? The cross was indeed the, uh, the event that I would say it was our rescue, right? It was our rescue and what we needed. Um, his sacrifice was there and able to keep us so that we could always have the unadulterated love of Christ. And it's the love that we need. And his love that we experienced on that cross told us that it had no bounds. Amen. And in spite of his suffering, um, he's demonstrated an unparalleled love and forgiveness. So that's why we cannot practice unforgiveness as Christians, as believers. We have to practice Loving and forgiving. Why? Because we say we love God. We say we worship our Savior. We say we're going to be like him. He was forgiving. He was loving. He prayed for his persecutors, right? <laughs> now, are you ready to pray for your persecutors, for the people who do you wrong, people who say things wrong to you, are you ready to do that? You know what I'm saying? He did it for you. You know, he got on that cross and in spite, he said, Father, forgive them, right? Because they they don't know what they're doing. You know? Like they don't realize what they're doing. I think it was Luke who said that, like, they don't realize the fact that I am who I am, you know? And those words have been said time and time again, but literally, look at the words. He's saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. List literally after they loved on him, after they, you know, worshiped him, after they heard all the miracles that he performed, Jesus was a miracle worker, you know, going from town to town, from place to place. He was healing. He was saving. He was delivering. He was making flocks lives better. And all of this, they still rejected it. They still did all these things to hurt him, all right? So what are you doing so that you can love better? You know, in this Holy Week, God, I want to love better. What are you doing during this Holy Week so that you can forgive better? God, I want to forgive better. I want to forgive. You know, and sometimes it's hard. I was just talking to our young people on Sunday in youth church about the act of forgiving, you know? And sometimes it's easier said than done. And I know some of you this morning uh, may need to forgive someone. And whomever it is, I challenge you over the next few days as we celebrate the greatest love of Jesus dying on the cross and he still forgave them. Why don't you take some time and forgive that person, that individual that you need to forgive? You know who it is, you know. And, and you might say you forgive them, but do you really? You know what I'm saying? And, you know, we as Christians, we need to set the bar. We don't know who might be saved, who might be um, set free, who might have a life that's changed forever because of our acts of unselfishness, right? And we forgive them for the things that they do to us. We forgive them for the things that they say to us. We forgive them for what they did to us. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side. I don't know where I would be. Amen. So as we think about this week and this holy week, let's not um, walk away from the reality that it was a sacrifice. In fact, I believe it was a sacrifice that he did not have to do or deserve, you know, but he was compassionate and his grace was so compassionate that he did it just for you. You know, the crucifixion was brutal, right? Um, and my savior didn't, should not have had to endure the brutalness that comes 
with that sacrifice. But in spite, he took the time to let us know that he was sent to save. God sent his son to save, right? God sent his son to heal. God sent his son to deliver. And if he did all these things, he sent his son and his son did what he was sent for. Uh, you know, have you did what you were sent for, right? Um, have you done, have you had your place on earth? Have you done what you were supposed to do? And he came to love, he came to heal, right? Um, and the best part about it is that he lived, but then he died. However, <laughs> an empty grave, amen, is there to prove that my Savior lives. And it's because he lives that I can face tomorrow um, in spite of what I do, in spite of what I go through, in spite of what I experience, in spite of what I um, can't handle on my own. All fear is gone because I know who holds my future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. You know, we need to carry the weight of Jesus' sacrifice in our hearts, right? And the events of this week serve as a reminder of the depth of, you know, God's love for us and the length that he endured and, and the length that he went through to, you know, recognize himself with us. And as I approach this resurrection, I'm going to be consistently amazed at what my Savior did because I understand that my Savior did not have to do it, but he did it just for me, right? He did it so that we can experience his love, so that we can experience his grace. So that's why we as believers, we need to tell others about his love. We need to tell others about his grace. We need to tell others what he can do for them because he did it for them. He died for them. He sacrificed his life for them. And that's so important because I don't know where I would be if it had not been for the love of God and him dying for me. So that's why on this resurrection week, right? This time in which we as believers go into a time in which we celebrate the resurrection of our Savior. The fact that he did not stay in that grave, right? Um, I thank him for not staying in the grave. I thank him for rising for me because I don't know where I would be if my Savior was not here. I thank him that daily I can call on him and depend on him and trust him. Hallelujah. I can trust him to know that he will make a way. And I thank him for making the way. I thank him for healing. I thank him for delivering me. And I thank him for the times in which, because he is able to do it. He's able to make ways. He's able to open doors. He's able to heal. He's able to sacrifice. He's able to do these things for me. And on this day, I give him all the praise. I give him all the glory. I give him all the honor because I understand that if it had not been for the Lord on that cross, I would be a wreck probably undone, right? I don't know. So on this day, I give him total praise. I give him total praise because he deserves it. I give him total praise because he is all way maker. He's made ways in my life. He He's made ways in my life. I don't know how many of you really thank the Lord for making ways in your life. Um, he, he's made ways in our life. He's made ways in our life. He's helped us to get exactly what we need from him. 
And it's because of the grace of God that we're here. And I thank him for making ways in my life, opening doors in my life. And I don't know about you out there, but I know that this second, this minute, this hour is only because of God consistently being there and making ways. His grace, his mercy, his love is ever, he's never changing. He's not going nowhere. He's there to stay. And he's there for each and every one of you. And that's why. I thank God today for being just who he is and doing it just for me. He did it just for me. He did it just for me. Thank you, Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, because you are an awesome, wonderful Savior. God, you're so good. God, you are so good. We love you, God. We worship you, God. We magnify you, God, because you are so good. God, you're amazing. Hallelujah. You are amazing, God. So, God, on this day, we give you our total praise, God, because you deserve it. God, you've been so good to us. God, you made ways in our lives so on this Wednesday. We wake up, God, because we want you to know that we thank you for the sacrifice in which you made. We thank you because we understand that you did not have to do it. But we thank you, God, for making ways for us. And before we begin to beg and plead, God, we spend this moment on this morning, God, to thank you. Thank you for making ways. Thank you for all the times you've healed our bodies. God, thank you for all the times you've turned things around in our lives, God. If there is any sick listening. God, we thank you right now in advance for healing our bodies, God. We thank you, God, because you're such an awesome Savior, God, and you paid the ultimate sacrifice for us. You bore our sins, and you offered us forgiveness, God, and eternal life, God, so we thank you. God, you deserve so much thanks on today, God. God, we don't deserve it, but we're going to give it to you. We're going to give you the praise. We're going to give you the glory. God, we're going to give you the honor because you alone are worthy of it. And you've been so, so good. And we need your fire to flow like never before, your love to flow like never before, God, because you're an awesome savior and we love you. So God, on this day, we give you all the praise, all the glory. Thank you, God, for thinking of us, and taking our place on that cross, and we need you to breathe on us. Breathe on us like never before. God, cause the devil to be a lie and let us to know that we need you. God, we need you now. God, we need you now. We need your grace. God, we need your love to continue to flow in us like never before. And with all these things in your precious son's name, Jesus, amen. God is so good. God is so good. I don't know where I would be without him. I don't know where I would be without him. The best thing that you could do is give your life to him. Um, simply um, visit readtempo.org forward slash readcares if you believe that you need to dedicate or if you want to dedicate your life to him. It's a simple prayer that you can pray. And that simple prayer is definitely just, Lord, I confess my sins and ask for your forgiveness. Lord, I ask that you come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Take control of my life and help me to walk in your footsteps daily by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You prayed that prayer. That's literally the best prayer you could ever pray. Visit readtemple.org forward slash read cares. Whether you pray that prayer expect, expecting salvation um, to prayer or to join our great body of believers here at Read Temple, we want you to know that we love you and we care about you. And Jesus indeed did die for you. He paid that ultimate sacrifice for you. And we love them forevermore for it. It's a time that we all can participate in, and that's giving. Um, text Read Temple now to 45777. Read Temple to 45777. This is your opportunity to sow on this and give. Um, or visit readtemple.org forward slash give. Readtemple.org forward slash give for your chance to give 
even now. Hallelujah. God is so good. I don't know where I would be without the amazing grace and mercy of my Savior. We have some wonderful announcements we want to share with you here at Reed Temple. Um, Boot Camp 24 is happening Saturdays, March 16th through December 14th. Um, every Saturday, 9 a.m. to 10 30 a.m. Uh, members are invited to participate even hybrid or in person. And visit retemple.org for slash events for more information on that. Easter at the temple is happening on tonight um, at 7 p.m. 7 p.m. We're looking forward to you being at Easter at the temple tonight at 7 p.m. as we go to the tomb um, and experience Easter at the temple tonight at 7 p.m. Looking forward to having each and every one of you there. One of the great highlights of Holy Week is seven last words of Christ. Um, and we're going to experience that on this week as we experience Christ dying on the cross and, and doing all of these things. And we're going to experience that on this coming um, Friday um, as we go and experience the seven last words of Christ there at our um, sanctuary at um, noon, 12 noon actually, is the time of that service. So much happening, including our Easter egg hunt and extravaganza on Saturday at 2 p.m. in which we expect to see each and every one of you there um, with your family. Families, they're looking for so much for God to do so much things, and we are knowing that He did it all just for us. As you take on the day, remember that Jesus paid the ultimate sacrifice. In spite of what we say, what we do, mistakes we've made, He paid the ultimate sacrifice just for you. And I thank Him that in spite of what we experience or go through, He paid it and He did it just for me. Take one today and have a wonderful day knowing that if God can do anything, he can do everything and there's nothing too hard for him. God bless you. Have a blessed day. When he shall come, when he shall come.